My opinion on Nano Hydroxyapatite toothpaste as an alternative to fluoride. Although I am pro fluoride toothpaste, that doesn't mean I'm anti Nano Hydroxyapatite toothpaste. But I am hesitant due to the lack of education attached to it. Let's talk. There are two main reasons I still hesitate to recommend Nano Hydroxyapatite over fluoride. Number one, fluoride is more effective in acidic environments. Cavities develop in acidic conditions, and fluoride toothpaste helps prevent decay better than Nano Hydroxyapatite in these acidic conditions. This is due to fluorapatite remaining remaining stable at a pH as low as 4.5, while hydroxyapatite dissolves at 5.5. Since acidic environments in the mouth are directly linked to cavities, fluoride has an edge here. Number two, the lack of medical regulatory approval for nanohydroxyapatite. So when there's no regulatory processes to ensure nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste contains the 10% nanohydroxyapatite with true nano-sized particles, not micro, companies can easily make unverified claims and cut corners. And it's hard for us as consumers and or as dental professionals to be confident in their effectiveness without this regulatory oversight. So basically, nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste companies can advertise whatever they want and it doesn't have to align with what's actually in their toothpaste. Anyway, overall, I'm not against nanohydroxyapatite being a fluoride alternative for those who want to use it. I'm just being realistic. People are getting very excited on social media about nanohydroxyapatite without knowing all the facts. The importance of the 10% sized particles and rod shapes versus cone shapes and all these details are not talked about enough. The science is good. It is good on nanohydroxyapatite when it contains all the right things, right? But are the companies following the science is the question. And if the companies say they are following the science, what makes you trust them? A fancy marketing campaign on their website? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to be realistic and practical with patient care at the top of my mind. I believe in providing patients with the best options based on research and regulations. So if you want my opinion, of course you can form your own. But mine is that yes, the research is good. But until nanohydroxyapatite gets regulatory approval in the US. I'm personally sticking with fluoride. If you take away anything from this video, let it be this. If you're feeling frustrated, I encourage you to watch my full length video on YouTube where I dive into all the details and provide all my references and sources before any debates start in the comments section. Most importantly, let's remember that we all share the same goal, healthy teeth and healthy bodies. I want that for my patients and they want it for themselves as well. We all want the same thing, health. And respecting different preferences starts with clear communication and proper patient education. I'm keeping an open mind as nanohydroxyapatite regulation in the U.S. hopefully evolves. Until then, thank you for watching and always consult your personal dental provider to find the best toothpaste for your individual mouth.